are you guys doing today? Beautiful day outside. I'm at the Walmart, you know. So let's check things out. That's the highway. That's my truck right there. All right. It's been pretty good. Can't complain. Uh, a few things. Today's 26, so today I'll be a year. So let's go here. So I can avoid that. Uh, oh, this is an echo though. It's a bit of an echo, so I might have to keep it a little bit quieter. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Let's set you guys here. Uh, okay, that's, that's less light coming in. So, all right. So, one year at Swift Transportation. As you can see, you can probably hear all the reefer units going down. Uh, because I'm a dedicated driver right now for Walmart. So, yeah, it's quite a bit loud, to be honest. So, if you're new to the channel, thank you for subscribing. 300 subscribers, thank you guys. I highly appreciate it. I'm not gonna lie, I really, really thankful for all of you guys who have subscribed to the channel. I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, keep subscribing, keep commenting, keep liking the videos, and I highly appreciate each and every one of you guys. So. What is my experience within this one year mark of Swift? I'm gonna say that it was a little shaky at the beginning because my trainer, uh, my first trainer kind of sucked to be honest. My second trainer, he was awesome. Uh, he's been over 10 years in business. I am not sure about the other one. I think he, he was there too. He has some years going in there, but uh, it was just, I guess, the training portion that he was not really that great at. But my second trainer, hopefully he doesn't mind, his name is Mark. If you ever uh, train for Swift, he's a great gentleman uh, to work with and he's a really good trainer, by the way. Uh, so yeah, shaky at the beginning. Um, a lot of things that I couldn't learn that I had to learn on my own. And I'm sorry if it's a little shaky, is they have a plastic table and I'm kind of leaning my elbows on it, so. And <laughs> yeah, so. It was a bit rough at the beginning for me. After training, it's fairly easy. Training is fairly easy. If you just knock it down, do your backing, your 90s and your straight backs, you'll be fine. Excuse me. And, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, sorry. It just kind of awkward seeing people watch me recurrent. Uh, so a bit awkward. So the training was fairly easy. I uh, can't complain about that, to be honest. Uh, if I keep saying, oh, I'm, I apologize, and I sometimes suck on my do this a lot, so sorry. I'll try to avoid it. I lower the, the volume uh, by negative, so hopefully it doesn't catch a lot of the nuisance of my uh, slurring speech. <laughs> so back up and again, back, back in the, uh, on, the, on track. So, uh, rough couple of the first the driving was easy to be honest the the training especially because i came already like i told in the other videos i went through a actual school i didn't do it through swift so i didn't have to come through their program i signed a one-year um uh lease uh, a one-year contract with them to to stay with them all right after i got out of training i headed down on the over the road by myself. They gave me my truck, 163127, which was my first truck, uh, 2016 Freightliner, which had no inverter, had no refrigerator. Uh, <laughs> I could barely cook anything on uh, cigarette lighters because if I connected two units, uh, it'll blow the, the fuses out, which it was not bad because I'm I'm a bit of mechanically inclined, so changing a fuse was not really that big of a deal for me, to be honest. <laughs> so a few things that I actually had to learn that my trainers were not able to teach me because we probably never went through, well, my second trainer did. Uh, he showed me a bit of it, but something I'm the kind of person who has to do it uh, in theory to actually learn how to do it. So that took me a little while and I was, actually scaling my loads, moving my tandems, uh, my drives, and my fifth wheel. That's one of the main things I suggest you guys learn. And if you're going to a school, uh, ask them to show you, because a lot of the schools, they don't show you how to move your tandems, to be honest. And that's just because 
uh, a lot of the CDL schools have turned into uh, basically a mill. They just want to grind and grind, grind and grind, push, 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 because that's how they make their money. And especially if you do it to a government grant, they, they don't really pay much attention to it, except that, oh, we need to teach him fast, get him on the, on the road, because that's how we're gonna get paid faster. So I suggest that I had about 200 hours of training with a CDL school, CDL school. So I asked them how to show you, you how to move the tandems. I can't stress this enough. Learn how to move your tandems because the companies, they won't pay for the skills, the scale tickets, okay? They won't pay for it. And if there's something wrong with the weight and the first scale ticket says it's correct, um, they won't pay for you or fight for you unless you have a second ticket. So my suggestion is once you scale your weight and it says you need to move like three, four holes, whatever direction you need to move them to, rescale the weight because if you don't have that second sheet saying that you fixed it, cat scale will not file your ticket in court unless you actually can prove that you fixed it. So get two tickets, get three if you need to fix it, all right? It's better than, it's better to, to waste an hour or, or hour and a half or whatever it takes you, like half an hour, uh, moving your tandems, than going and paying the scale house two, three hundred dollars for a ticket because you didn't learn how to move your tandems properly. That was one of my biggest things that I learned. I pay almost a thousand dollars because of it and some laws and regulations like moving yourself to the left lane, there was an emergency on the uh, emergency vehicle on the right shoulders. I never had to deal with this, to be honest. Never went through that type of experience even when I was driving my own car. And I actually did for the first time, sorry, when I was driving a truck. And that was $300 there as well. So might as well just learn how to move your tandems, move the, the current laws. Uh, if you see someone, a uh, broken down vehicle, emergency vehicle, tow trucks, repair trucks, on the right shoulder and you're in the right lane, I suggest you move to the left if possible. And if you're not able to move to the left lane to avoid uh, hitting them, slow down your speed to about 25 miles an hour, put your four-way flashers on. That will signify not only you, but the people behind you and the officer looking at you that you're coming, that you actually are trying to look out for them. Because if not, they will take that as a consideration. And they, if they have two cops, they will send one of them after you so, to get you a ticket. So might as well get that fixed right away. Uh, second, I got really sleepy when I first started over the road by myself. Uh, and I found it really helpful that to stop about every two to three hours, take a 15 minute nap and roll on. And that kept me a lot of, uh, that kept me a lot on the road. Mostly when I was in the Arizona, uh, Utah, and all those areas in which it was really hot during the summer. For some reason, I always got sleepy. So 15 minutes, taking a nap for 15 minutes will do you amazing. Uh, one of the other things that really, let's see, uh, bothered me, I guess you can say, was that uh, amount of time, like you don't need to be three months outside running. I mean, you can if you don't have no family or anything. And if you don't have any family, I suggest you take all your stuff, put it in a storage unit, save that money, bank, you know, and eventually once you are ready to get out of the, the trucking business or move into another uh, type of business like real estate or you want to get your own authority or anything like that, at least you're going to have some bank in the bank uh, so you can start that new journey or to boost your, your new movement over there. Uh, in that new industry or new career choice that you're going to try to uh, aim to, you know? When you first start, right, the trucking business has a lot of uh, turnarounds, right? There's a, lot, there's a high turnaround when it comes to workers here. Not everybody's made to stay out, out for two, three months at a time, all right? Nobody's willing to sacrifice your personal life in order to gain money 
this kind of money and uh, trucking is not a career choice for everyone all right if you want to do your year and they gotta get a dedicated account like I am or get a local account uh, you should it still pays great a lot of the local companies they'll pay you by the day uh, it, and it'll range around 240 to 300 dollars depending on what kind of job you're doing to be honest so I apologize for the sounds and the charts going around is I can't help it right now <laughs> I didn't want to do it in the truck because I felt like I was getting too I was making too many videos inside the truck so I just wanted to get a little of a different scenery and I didn't want it's too windy outside so I didn't want to get all that wind interference coming in as well so hopefully having the mic like this is not picking out too much of that other direction over there so let's see how it goes you know <clears throat> uh, other than that, the first few loads that they're gonna give you, like I said, because you're new, are gonna be short hauls, like 100, 200 miles, 300, back and forth, for about the first three to four weeks, once you are uh, got out of uh, your, your mentor truck. Now, everybody's different, depending on the account that you're on, or what department you're on, how your driver literally feels about you, or what are your intentions. So my suggestion is, if you're finished your mentorship program with your trainer, uh, tell the, your mentor, I want long haul and I want long road, long hauls, you know, so they don't make you take the short hauls because they don't really pay a lot. And you're gonna be doing a lot of running around and a lot of wasting of time and it's not gonna be a lot of money. So might as well just talk to your drivers, the leaders, and tell them that you want to go long. Another of the things that I've learned is that when it comes to uh, layaways, when they make you wait in the shipper, right, or your load is not ready, ask for the money. Uh, driver leaders will not automatically give you money uh, when you have to wait at the shipper after the two hours. So you have to talk to them and be like, hey, detention pay. There it goes. Detention pay. I want to get my detention pay for being here because they will not do it automatically. Even though you get the message in your Qualcomm, oh, you've been here over two hours, you know, uh, what's the reason? Uh, yeah, you send your message in. They are not gonna pay you either way just because you send the message. Talk to your driver leader or your driver manager, whoever is in charge of you, and tell them, hey, I've been here for this time or I was here this long, I want, uh, my de detention pay, all right? Because they will not give it to you. Like I said, they will not pay for any type of tickets they have to deal with scales or um, just basically scales. And any any other tickets that you get like for traffic violation, that's on you because you're the one who's driving. So get on that, learn how to do it. Mm. It was a trip. Uh, my suggestion is if you can get a better truck, a new truck, make sure that you inspect the air conditioner. Doesn't matter what company you're going to or what you're doing. Once you get into that first truck, make sure that you check, inspect that truck to your best of your abilities and make sure that the air conditioner and the heater is working. Uh, make sure that the idle is working as well. And if you have a problem with the idle system as to how it's set up, you can always talk to your shop talk to your driver leaders and ask them to remove it because you have a whatever condition and you can't be in the hot weather or whatever. If you have a 2018 and up, a Freightliner, they do have optimized idle, which you won't need to worry about. You just set your temperatures, hit that little button, and you're good to go, all right? Uh, another thing you're gonna have to long, uh, get used to is the random work hours. For me, over the road, it's much easier to control my hours and I was able to actually facilitate a, a normal or average sleeping schedule for me, which was good and I loved it. Because usually by about five or six o'clock, I shut down, went to sleep, woke up at three o'clock in the morning or f got ready, bounce, or wake up at two, get my shed ready and bounce, you know? That was one of the benefits of actually working over the road. You do get to see a lot of beautiful, beautiful things, to be honest. The only thing you won't be able to enjoy all of it. You have a big ass truck, 
that it can't fit everywhere. If you're taking a two or three days off to one of these cities, you can always get a rent an Uber or a rent a car. A lot of these companies that you work for, like Swift, uh, probably like Night Transportation, which is the same, uh, Prime, uh, Schneider, uh, Creed, these companies have contracts and discounts with major uh, manufacturers and car companies and they will give you discounts between 30 to 50 percent off so utilize it you remember you just have to uh, fill the, tr the the vehicle back up to where it was when you got it and return it back you got a cell phone most of you have smart cell phones so getting directions will not be a problem my suggestion is that you buy a uh, a car mount a window mount for your cell phone and you can move it around if you rent one of these cars you can just use it all right and like california is beautiful arizona when you go through utah it's just beautiful and i wish i could have stopped by yellowstone and all of these uh monument places that i wish i could stop because i didn't have the proper uh vehicle to get in there or i was just in a rush okay so you, you're, you'll be able to see more and enjoy more once you get your own truck and you become uh, an owner of, you know, or depending on what kind of job you're choosing to do. Um, managing your hours well, like I said, that always includes how long you're gonna run. Like, the freight liners for Swift is 63 on pedal, 65 on cruise control. If you're a uh, lease operator or owner operator, lease operators have, uh, I believe, to 67. That's the max. For owner operators, that's your truck, so you you don't need to be, you know. They don't manage your speed as well, but they would like you to stay on 67 miles an hour. They'll be managing your hours. They'll be looking at your hours through the Qualcomm, as to what I read uh, online. So th there is that there. But you'll be able to take your trucks and go out to places that you would not be able to uh, if you were uh, working with a uh, Swift trailer completely and stuff like that. Like I said, managing your hours. That was one of the biggest things that I had to learn. And it wasn't really that hard for me because once I found that rhythm as to how many miles I wanted to run or uh, how many hours I wanted to sleep or like what did I want to do, you know? Sometimes you're gonna get lows like a thousand miles, 12,000, 1800, 2200. And you're, you're gonna get like four or five days to get it there, to be honest. So, if you know how to drive properly, you can literally have one day off extra and you will be fine, all right? Uh, I used to drive around 600 miles when I wanted to, 500. I think my average was about 500. That's why I try to keep it for the day, eight or nine hours, because I used to do recaps. Recaps means that you run to eight, nine hours, so by the time the eighth day comes, you have hours coming in and you can keep on rolling. So you won't have to have that struggle. Sometimes, depending on what low you have to take in, you're gonna run out of time, to be honest, but that's what it is. Oh, well, that's the experience with the driver leaders and uh, the driver management. For me, it was amazing. I can't speak for you because every person has their own experiences, you know? Uh, my driver leader, in my over the road account awesome person uh you know i i can't say nothing bad about it you know if there was something bad it was because i didn't speak out i, I got stuck in georgia and you know i'm one of like 40 guys or something like that so if i don't speak out i'm gonna get lost in 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 the midst of everybody else so my suggestion is speak out, be like, hey, I've been here for this amount of times, so I'm not getting any miles, please. I wanna get out of here, send me over the road. These are dedicated things that, I, that are there, and I wanna do miles, I'm not making enough money, you know? Speak out. One of the best way to transmit what you wanna say is to speak out, tell them what's going on. Not everybody's gonna be receptive to what you're gonna say or what you wanna do. But it's always better to say something than expect someone to read your mind and say it. That's kind of obvious. Uh, uh, the pay is 
eh, the pay is okay, okay? I ain't gonna lie, I get per diem, so at the end of the day, it's great for me. I gotta say that, because per diem, we get per diem in New Jersey, I know some state don't accept it, and we do it through uh, Swift, so it saves you some money, to be honest. I don't know how that works at the end of the year much, Oh, okay, so per diem, this doesn't show us an actual taxable thing. It's already been taxed, by the way, uh, about $5 worth of it, I believe, or I said $5 of processing fees. I haven't gotten that answer yet. I have to ask it. But it hasn't been bad. I love it, to be honest. And now that I'm dedicated, it has gotten way better, to be honest. Uh, yeah, we're a bit of a, a bit of a recession, you can say, because of what's happening right now with the coronavirus. But, you know, think about what you're gonna do because switching jobs within a major event like, like it's happening right now is not what is recommended, to be honest. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, guys, if you're new to the channel, if you're new here or you come out of any random event, they got you here, subscribe. Uh, like comment please thank you for all the 300 subscribers that has subscribed to the channel highly appreciate it uh, sometimes I wonder why you guys subscribe but thank you I appreciate it guys stay safe stay blessed and if the wheels ain't turning you ain't making money so stay safe see you then bye